Micro, we're jammed to abandoned buildings. Seize an empty cup, we fell on. I keep my circle tight. Vibe just right with my six strings singing all night. Gender, faith, color, or lover. Welcome everyone to the Eve Growing Concept. Today we're going to talk some more about a carbon based composting bin. This is this year's, this is almost a month since I started it and it, it got activated literally the next day after I um, I packed it, I minced my leaves up very fine and I put it into this bin and I pack it down. So I start with a full composting bin for the most part, all carbon based from the leaves I gather from my yard in my neighbor's yard. And we've had a consistent heat, hot heat, for, for a little more than three weeks right now. And we're gonna see how long this hot heat lasts because we're gonna do some stuff with this um, this heat that is just, uh, to me, amazing. And I've been following a lot of um, videos on YouTube in reference to heating with composting bins. And I'm gonna start to do some video, some more videos on this concept. Now, this is all, this is all a part of the vermenting um, aspect of the Eve growing. Um, you remember with the Eve growing, we have this uh, vermiculture concept called vermenting, where we mince all of our, our food down to the smallest possible pieces, right? And I'll put some links down below there. And the slurry you get from mixing it up, running the water through your garbage disposal, and um, there's other ways to do it. You don't have to use a garbage disposal. You can put it in a bucket and, and chop it all up, and we'll show you the different ways we can um, deal with our food scraps without having to use electricity. If you're off the grid or something like that, you don't have electricity at this time, then there's other ways to get your food to the smallest possible pieces. But anyways, um, back to the, the composting. Now this is this year's pile. Last year's pile we're going to take a look at. A year ago I did the same thing I did here. I didn't keep as good record on that one. I just was amazed how long it took heat remained in the pile, activated, because I keep adding slurry. So I get some more slurry I'm going to add to this pile of pure carbon. Again, that's all that's in here is leaves, and if you watched my other video, I put my cat litter in there as well, and I turn my dog too into a slurry so it breaks down faster, and all those microbes heat this pile up, so if there's any dangerous pathogens in there, hopefully they'll all be killed <laughs> in, the, um, in the process. So right now we're looking at... 151 or 152 um, and I've got some videos I'm going to post down below of people I've been following and re or studying in reference to heating up a pile and what I hope to do some uh, running a coil through it and um, to get it we're trying we got to get this heat somehow outside with it without without it smelling or anything and so I want to open source this idea to see if any other people are doing it and is it the first time you've heard of somebody just putting slurry with all the microbes in a liquid form because that liquid go gets in there rather than putting your manures or whatever you're using as your nitrogen and packing it and trying to heat it up that way is it better to just pour it on top start with a carbon based composting bin pure carbon and then heat it up with a slurry is it is it better I'm thinking so far we're almost a month in with the, these very hot, hot temperatures I'm thinking it's kind of a, a neat little secret if anybody's heard about it before then let me know if since we compost everything and feed all of our, our solids to our red wigglers I have a lot of slurry to be putting into this pile I have a lot of excess where would I do with it otherwise so a great thing about fermenting is the aspect that you do have another place to put that slurry that might even be better, especially if we're thinking of living off the grid. Uh, my intention with my video here in the Eve Growing Concept is to live off the grid and not need to leave where I live. I don't need to go out into the country to live off the grid. I can do it right here in my little town. And I think w w the way the world is looking, I think we're all gonna have to at least think of these different methods of taking care. If, if something does happen, then we want to be prepared. We want to know what to do with our um, outputs. We want to know where we're going to get some inputs for ourselves, right? And I think hot composting has a lot of promise as far as heating a little shed. I have my pile that I did last year that had a lot of worms on top. When I take the cover off, I'd have a lot of reds on top of there. I, can't, I don't see any right now because it has gotten very cold out. So they've, I don't know where they've gone. Maybe they've gone deeper somewhere. So, carbon-based composting piles. 
let's open source this idea. Let's figure out ways to heat up stuff. Wouldn't it be nice to heat up a um, jacuzzi or something like that, right? Wouldn't it be nice if we can do through thermal siphoning, if we can not even need a pump to have it? Um, we'll look into that in other videos. I'm going to try experiment with a lot of different things, hopefully, if I can find the time to do that. But right now, I'm just concentrating on the heat of the pile. That's what I want to concentrate, see how long we can regulate it, how easy it is. I Hopefully I won't have to turn it. As I've said in my Facebook book link, and those links will be down below, is um, I do move this pile from, like from here to right next to it just to get these outside leaves in and try to get those composted as well because most of it is all in the internals of it. So let's take a look inside this pile and see what we got going on again. All right, and then we'll take a look at last year's pile and see what's going on with that. And last year's pile, I need some duff for um, more duff. I've already used, I, I already got some duff, but I, I got to get some more duff because I got some planting I want to do in the basement. So I'm going to need some more soil. So, and also if there's any comments on what else I should add, because as you know, it's a carbon-based leaf and I've added a lot of different nitrogen and uh, nutrients as far in the slurry, but what else should I put into this soil to make it even better? Um, so I can, as we grow organically, to get our plants eat the best we can get out of them. All right, so let's take a look. All right, let's take a look at last year's. This is basically what last year's pile looks like here. Okay, so this is last year's. Hey, quiet! Got some friends coming to visit. It's like Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. We got some friends over. Visiting. Jenny, quiet! Hey! Jenny, that's it! Jenny, that's it now. Hey, Jenny. Be a good girl, Jenny. Get back now. So we have some visitors to our pile here. Our hot composting pile, Frank. Huh? That's what we're hey, talking look, about. Hey, look at this. Get out of here, Jenny. Jenny, get out of here. Come here, Jenny. What's up, Ed? Hi. Hey, you compost everything you had? I, hey, I just yeah, added uh, leaves here. Yeah. And I put a slurry on top she of that. Smell, she she smells a yeah, dog. Oh, Ed's got a dog? Yeah, I got two. Uh, he, she smells a dog on him. My, my wife's brother in law, he had a um, chemical barrel oh, and he yeah. made a stand. He said, Oh, these, this is easy to make. And he you know, cut a, a door in it, put a hinge on it, and a latch, and you roll it around, and, and it worked really good. He says, It works wonderful. But a, a bear got in it. Oh, <laughs> And then he crapped on it. Really? <laughs> and he well, says, he crapped on his food. <laughs> oh, brother. Yeah, well, this is just leaves. This is this year's pile. Yep. I minced a bunch of leaves up. And um, I'm filming right now, guys. You mind being in the video? Yeah, oh. OK. This is Mr. Hi. Hi. This is Mr. Well, this is Frank and uh, Ed. <laughs> yeah. What's your last name, Ed? I won't put that in there. But this is this year's pile, right? Minced leaves. That's all that's in there. And slurry from vermenting. One yeah, the thermometer vermenter. in there. Yeah, look at this. I'm up to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, man. That's hot, right? Yeah. That's hotter than our furnace. Yeah, you could pack your bedroom in that stuff. You know, if I could think of a way to get that heat, and that's consistent heat. Yeah. That's one, that's almost yeah, a month yeah, old. from the leaves, huh? Just leaves and the liquid slurry. Oh, my goodness. Here's what you put over there. Just a tarp. Uh, I just put a tarp. A tarp. But I just, um, Let's see here. Let's just take a look. Watch the heat that comes out of this thing. Ready? So if you could heat a, a, a greenhouse or a small, a small lot. Uh, uh, I think uh, um, the bum. Whoa, big. Nice, uh, huh? Yeah, yeah, a hobo could sleep on that. <laughs> it almost looks burnt. Look at this. This looks like it's almost ashes, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It degraded real fast. You know, they say, there's a story of a guy in World War II that say, or something like that, where he saved his life by escaping and using compost to heat it, keep him hot. I believe it. Not dry, but hot. Yeah. Keep him for free. Well, maybe he put a plastic tarp. I don't know how. But that's kind of amazing, right? Yeah. And that's last, that's last year's pile that did the same thing. Uh -huh. 
Now that's soil in one year, just leaves. Oh, wow. I like your economy uh, hook there. <laughs> yeah, I got that from an old farmer with a lot of wisdom. <laughs> right, Frank? Yeah. All right. Let's check some different temperatures before I touch it. All right, let's see here. I'm going to go down about a foot. Let's go a foot down. Foot down gives us about 130. How about over here, Mark? Foot down. Over to the side here, we are, we're reading. It's going down to, looks like 150. Over here. Now let me try, how about a foot in from here? Now, a foot in from the middle here. Put in from the middle on the side here. I'm going back up. Looks like it's going up to 120 over here on the sides. So, of course, the main gist of the heat is right about here. I bury this uh, thermometer in here and I'm getting about, it goes way up nice and fast too. So, you know, it's hot down there. Deeper, I'm getting a reading. I'm getting a reading about. Yeah, we're going up to 160 right there. So if we could get a coil, huh? If we could get a coil of some kind in here. And if this heat stays consistent, we can do amazing some amazing things, I would think, right? At the very least, having a carbon-based composting bin for us worm lovers, maybe there's a way to heat our outside worm bins. Free heat. Continuous heat. Today's temperature right now is probably not quite 40 degrees. So let's just see what we got here. Because I do have to add some slurry. That bag, I wonder where that came from. I'm not supposed to have a car. That must have came from the cat litter. And the smell of it is kind of not bad really. It's, you know, especially with that cat urine and all that. Um, I don't smell it as bad as when I first put it in. I'm going to put some slurry over here this time. Add a little there. There we go. Now this has got, I've been fermenting our turkey dinner bones. You know, all our excess bones and stuff like that. I was able to mince those down. I'll be feeding the bone part to the, to the, um, Reds. This is yes. Look at so I don't have to. All that slurry is going into the nooks and crannies. I don't have to add my nitrogen in the form of uh, since I don't have chickens or cows or um, goats or anything like that. I don't have any farm animals, right? So this slurry is kind of making it competing with a farm, right? Here I live in a residential area and my pile is doing the same thing heating up um, notice in some of the video links, links that, that I, I show uh, the work it takes for them to build such a pile to get that heat and once the heat is done it's a dead pile whereas this pile we'll see how it goes we're almost into a month and once two months comes and three months comes, oh my God, if I can get into January and February, that would be quite amazing. There's a bunch of different ways we can harness this heat. And if you guys have a thought, any thought, please post it down there. I'd love to open source this with you. Carbon-based composting pile. You heard it here first folks, I think. So if you know of somebody else who adds slurry like this to their composting pile, let me know. It does take a long time to go. As I poured that, it is going seeping down slowly. That's my, let's go over this pile over here. There we go. I'll add all the rest of it there. Okay. That's 
all the liquid he have. So let's cover that back up. So let's get back to last year's pile after we were rudely interrupted by Frank and Ed. Only kidding. Frank is an amazing friend. He's like the Buddha of our little town, and he's a great asset to the community. Same with Ed, and I appreciate, I appreciate the cameo. So this pile no longer heats up. I think it stopped heating up late in the winter, early spring. This year's pile, I'll keep better records of it, and I'll keep you posted on my results on how, I, how long the heat lasts and how long I can keep it lasting. So save your leaves, folks, because you can turn it into awesome soil amendments. With this soil and castings, who knows what we can do, right? So that's basically it. That's all I have to say for now. If you like what you see, please subscribe. Come to my Facebook links, my Vermenting Facebook link, and then my Eve Growing Facebook link. And you can friend me at my uh, Mark Thomas Payne on Facebook as well. Let's grow up together. That's all I have to say. God bless. Over and out. If everything's moving slow, show you the place to go. My family and papa found kicking it. Always somewhere by the fire pit. If your friend and your family had free, if you're folding to not on me. My crew has talent and loyalty, and they'll be partying our buddy's royalty. You're damn right. Like, like, like my crew doesn't quit.